I'll start sharing screen. Uh, can all of you see this? Yes, okay. I mean, I can. Okay, thank you, thank you. So the further, I have typed out uh, or written out the first few slides, but don't worry, I will start uh, actually writing in front of you very soon. So, um, so what am I going to be doing? Uh, I am going to be following uh, this paper by Guo Ram. And there is the, reference, uh, comparing formulas for type GLN methanol polynomials, archive number is given. It's a very recent one. And this also has a supplement, which is even later. And I am following the um, non-supplement, the original one. And we will refer to the supplement as and when needed. And uh, we will go directly to section five of this paper. And we can do that because the sections are independent except for section four. And what is it that we are going to cover during my lectures? It's type uh, GLN, DA art, that is double affine art in group, double affine thicker algebra and the polynomial representation. So the notation for these is as follows indicated here. Um, Arun uses um, D tilde G L N, but I thought I'd shorten it to B tilde sub N. And um, this will uh, here again there is a instead of a G L N in the subscript and would be using N. So R stands for braid group. Uh, um, you know, that's an equivalent term as far as I understand. Uh, Arun uses art in group, so I will follow that. DA stands for double affine and HA stands for HECA algebra. So this uh, double affine art in group, double affine braid group is defined by generators and relations. And there will be some obvious automorphisms, and these will be called dualities, which will be very useful for us. So, uh, this is something that we will do presently. And this uh, double affine Hecke algebra will be the quotient of the group algebra of this double affine grade group by these relations. Okay, this is uh, analogous. Uh, if you know the Hecke algebra as a quotient of the group algebra of the braid group by such a relation, then you can see the analogy in the And we are going to do today, we are not going to reach uh, double affine the gaha at all today. Uh, we are only going to do the double affine Artin group. Uh, once again, here is the notation. So what are the generators and relations? So here is a convention for braid relations. Um, by the way, I am only going to be doing GLM. Okay, no, no other uh, group or uh, thing will uh, make an appearance. And uh, for the moment, we will not worry about the correspondence with what has gone on before. Maybe we will worry about that later. So in a sense, my lecture is completely independent of what has gone on before, uh, logically. And maybe that is not such a bad thing because uh, we've had uh, now some maybe eight lectures or seven lectures. And uh, if you are like me, you may be a bit lost. So starting from scratch again, maybe not a bad idea. Okay. So, uh, so if you write this, then this stands for uh, uh, this relation, okay, this box, uh, this braid relation. And if I, if two nodes are disconnected, then the corresponding generators come in. Of course, we are all familiar with this uh, convention. Okay. So what are the generators for um, uh, this uh, B 
tilde i x the dart so there is a bunch of generators but let's come, uh, let's first look at this this set of generators so this is like the uh, affine group uh, while group of uh, sln so you have a bunch of generators so when you write this it is understood that they are subject to the braid uh, relations like so okay so there is for example s not t1 s not is t1 um, s not t1 that holds because s not and t1 are connected by this uh, they are connected with like so okay and if i take for example something here uh, deep inside t7 or something like that where m is large and then s not and t7 will come in and so on. Okay. now there is a double and so that justifies maybe uh, this uh, taking another copy of this okay we are not taking ent an entirely new copy the t1 t2 tn minus 1 uh, are the same only the s not there is a instead of s not i'm going to take a new generator s not check and um, uh, once again the these uh, braid relations hold amongst these with, with uh, following these conditions okay so that uh, that uh, sort of we have spoken about these generators let us see what these generators are for so um, so this is this i represent you know g is a group element and cg denotes conjugation by g and so what it does is g, uh, this uh, g conjugates s not to t1 t1 to t2 t2 to t3 etc so it it is like a diagram automorphism of this uh, uh, of this except that you should not think that uh, uh, g to the uh, n or something uh, that is not you know g then i all it's all i'm saying right now is that g conjugates s not to t1 conjugates t1 to t2 etc so these are really part of the relations of uh, this dot okay and similarly there is g check which does the same for this uh, set of generators okay q is a central element okay that's q is a central element and there are these two relations uh, which uh, right now maybe look mysterious uh, and as hopefully as we use them more and more they will become more familiar so here they are t1 g check g these are these generators here is uh, is here and then there is this one relation okay and this is a q in front uh, sorry, Raghavan, did you say that g to the n is uh, identity or not? no? No, 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 no. But no. then if it permutes these things, what does it mean to say that? Uh, no, that is not necessary, right? G. Maybe uh, central or something? Or not even? That? Uh, no, no, no. no, no it's with no, a bunch no, of things. No, 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 no. Nothing, nothing like that. So uh, maybe I can ask. Uh, so this t uh, so should we think of the graph being t1 to tn in a line and then s not and s not check both being connected to it yeah uh, like you have drawn yeah, yeah. let's see on opposite sides so the action of g is just uh, uh, along that cy cycle which contains s not and it does not touch that other cycle so it, so therefore g to the n cannot be Okay, if you want to think g to the n is I know this is just short short hand notation for uh, um, you know you can I can write out g s not g inverse is equal to t one etc. Instead yeah. of writing out all those relations, so uh, yeah. so maybe it's still true that g to the n of any of these generators g to the minus n is that thing itself for the one of the generators here no uh, so say that again uh, so what do you what do you propose i'm asking if g to the n ti g to the minus n is equal to ti g to the uh, n ti g to the minus n ah. That yeah, this is true. This is true. Okay. This so it it is on this set of generators it has order n, but elsewhere maybe there is some because of s not 
correct. Doesn't have order and it commutes. Right? So for, you can say the following: C G acts on the set. Yeah, it commutes with those. That's right. T one, T n, and as a, as an act action on this set. Ha, C G has order. C G has order. This is show. Yeah, you can say this. By the way, uh, also, so the relations between S not and S not check between G and S not check, and G check and S not will mm -hmm. be. No, no, no. Okay. By the way, you, I, I, you know, I should have said this. I will say this now. Uh, I am no expert on this, right? I mean, my, my, uh, you know, uh, I am just a few days. My experience is only a few days old, but hopefully Arun is here, and uh, uh, so I can speak freely because uh, I request him to correct me and uh, you know uh, come in where I know speak, please. Uh, whenever uh, so far some. everything is perfect. Okay, <laughs> you thanks. Said thanks. Said everything correct. <laughs> okay, thanks. And uh, anytime, please feel free to uh, uh, interrupt and. Uh, Give us uh, insights. So, so there are no relations then between the other three. Pair? No, no. Maybe they are implied at the moment, but not right, explicitly right. written. Yeah. So, they, if they are, are they are uh, um, consequences of the relations that we have written down. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, once again, let's look at the relations. They are there. Okay. So we will we will uh, use them today. So you hopefully we will get uh, familiar. So don't worry too much if, particularly the last two, will uh, maybe once we will we'll use them and then they will become more familiar. Okay. Okay. So the first thing we will do today is uh, dualities. So there are two dualities, which are called I and Eta, uh, I, 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 this is actually in the paper written as uh, iota or something without the dot on top, but I don't know how to reproduce it. So I'll just call it I. Uh, so let us um, think of, look at I. Actually, both are involutions. Both are involutions. Okay. So the naive idea is to switch between S0 and uh, S0 check, right? So G does to this S0 and this T1 to Tn minus one, um, and G tilde does the same thing along the other one. So if I switch the roles of G and G, uh, G check, and S0 and S0 check, and the Ti is the same, then that seems like I should get some, you know, these, uh, but, let us look at 5.2.1 and what happens. So let me reproduce, uh, write down here 5.2.1. Sorry, I'm not very really, uh, as uh, deft as the other speakers with my uh, work on this uh, software. So I will try to improve over the next few weeks, next two weeks, but uh, so I'm writing down 5.2.1. Okay, the 5.2.1 refers to the number in the paper. This is what I'm writing. So this is what it was. Now, let us try to switch. So what happens is T1, G, G check. Right, I'm switching G check and G and T and minus one in this. Okay, now seems like I'm off, right? I mean, I'm, I'm not going to get this from Yes. Okay. However, if I do the following, okay, let me do the following here. Let me switch um, the uh, you know TI with TI inverse. Okay. Uh, then uh, let's try this. So T1 inverse G G check. So the, uh, let me let me use a red here and then cut this out. By the way, as you should have realized, this is all just some heuristic, just to make these a little more palatable. That's all. Okay. 
t and minus one. Okay. Now, um, this, if I um, see, if I send this, uh, if I this looks actually this looks like this. Do you agree? That seems to be the same, yes. That seems to be the same. Okay, so what we do, therefore, is the following. So let me write out without further ado what the um, thing is. Um, so 5.2.1 and 5.2.2 are preserved. Uh, and there, the following transformation g going to g check that's exactly what i wanted to do okay but instead of taking this won't work just flipping this naively won't work but i need to take an inverse so i do that pi goes to pi inverse um, q must go to q inverse this will become clear when we try Presently, we will try 5.2.2. I'll uh, we'll show see how it changes. Okay, and S not goes to S not check inverse. Okay. Okay. So um, let us see that all the relations uh, hold especially 5.2.1 we've just seen that 5.2.1 holds uh, let's try 5.2.2 okay so let me write down 5.2.2 here so this is t n minus 1 inverse t1 inverse g g check inverse q g check inverse G P n minus one. So let us do these transformations and verify that this uh, I get the same equation in maybe in slightly different form. So I just replace these by so maybe I'll use a different color so, so that it is transformed. Uh, P n minus one. Okay, this side, this G and G check get switched. So that's G inverse. Q inverse. Okay, uh, uh, actually, if you didn't know what how this will change, you can just try this and you can see that Q is must go to Q inverse. So uh, uh, instead of uh, sort of starting with this, you can try this out and then re reduce that Q must go to Q inverse. G. Uh, inverse g check t n minus one inverse t aha t one this is t one now hopefully you will agree with me that this looks the same as this uh, more specifically let me write out. Um, what I uh, so this looks like Q of RHS inverse is equal to Q of Q times sorry not Q of. So what I'm saying is, if I RHS and the LHS refer to this equation. So RHS inverse. So what this is RHS inverse. So what is this? Uh, did I get that right? Uh, maybe I'll switch. Uh -huh.
sorry, uh, maybe I made it more complicated than than it is. Forget what you said. Forget what you said. Uh, Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, I was sorry. I I got ahead of myself. So, is this is this okay? I, I, can I go on? Do you agree that this is so? This is this is like this, right? and I can send this. So, if I multiply by G and G check inverse on the right, I'll get. And then multiply by the inverses of these in front here, right? I, I remember that Q is central. Oh, did I say Q is central? Yes, I mentioned that. So this is the same equation as uh, this. I, I can somebody please confirm that this is all right? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay. Now here is the other duality. So, uh, so I have another symmetry of uh, 5.2.1 and 2. Okay, um, then that is, so Ti, Maybe it's better to think of this uh, as um, uh, the uh, symmetry in the um, part set of uh, the braid relations feature. Yeah? Um, G going to G inverse. And G check. Going to G check inverse. Okay, let's do that. So once again, I'm going to uh, write um, I'm going to write 5.2.1 T1 G check G is G G check Pn minus one inverse. Okay, now if I apply this, then this becomes, so this gets transformed to, use a different color for what gets transformed to, Tn minus one, G check inverse, G inverse is G inverse, G check inverse, P sub one inverse. Now, if I take the inverse of this, I get this. So this is like, if I take here, this is RHS inverse, and this is LHS inverse. Okay, so the I what I got, I got confused between, when I was trying to write such a thing previously, um, I got confused between eta and uh, uh, i. Okay, so this is called eta. So, uh, this, so let me write down eta is g going to g inverse, g check going to g check inverse, ti switching with Pn minus i and q uh, fixes eta fixes q s not s not. Of course, the thing to notice here is that when I make these change, when I make the switch in the piece, but keep the s not the same. Observe that the the picture the the, the braid uh, picture, the picture that gives me the braid relations, that is sort of satisfied. I, it's a it's a automorphism of that picture. Okay. Uh, 
and also when we do this g going to g inverse so g conjugates for example s not to t1 um, s not to t1 so g inverse will conjugate um, s not to uh, t n minus 1 t n minus 1 and because so if you remember this picture here this was g conjugation by t this was conjugation by t here is t1 t n minus 1 so so let me write it here conjugation by g goes from s naught to t1 now, when I apply this eta, this is S naught, this is Pn minus 1, and this is Cg inverse. And that's okay because if I go from G, Cg from here to here, Cg inverse goes this way, which is exactly this. Okay. So 5.2.2, I haven't verified, but verifies similarly. So I leave that checking. So we get these very important um, two uh, dualities. Eta is also denoted by this picture duality. So I guess uh, the uh, I am not drawn this very suggestively, but what this means, I guess, is this in this picture here with the S naught on top and the Ti is here. You are you are. Uh, uh, reversing the order here and that is what is meant by here and let me go back one page and here this uh, this thing uh, I call it I it's also called the check dual so actually the check is a very suggestive name for the duality as we will see okay okay now any questions so far So what we have done is we have uh, 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 given a set of generators and relations and defined the dot, the double affine R in group. And then we have observed that there are, it, it admits two beautiful dualities, which are automorphisms, which are actually in the motions. Yes, Arvind, you had a, you wanted something. So uh, this eta is, uh, I mean, is like a reflection symmetry, right? So you draw a vertical line passing through S0 and you you reflect the graph. In terms of the graph, yes, yeah. Uh, and uh, correspondingly, this I does not have, a, a, I mean, is not a diagram automorphism. This I symmetry? I it just takes a, I, a Ti to Ti inverse. So it, it takes uh -huh. the first, sort of the first picture to the second picture. The first, so uh, uh, see, let's let's but see what is. And Ti inverse are not related in any simple. I mean, they are. Related, right. It's under inversion and trans moving to the other picture. Even. Yeah. So, no. Ti uh, is. Okay, I will let. Uh, yeah. I I don't know how one one is supposed to think of this. So it's not, and there is T one, and there is T n minus one. Right. Right. So when I apply I to this. What I what it becomes is S not check inverse T one inverse T n minus one. So this is what what happens to it. So you can say that that it carries it switches the two pitches. No, but uh, that's what I'm a bit confused by. I mean, T i inverse is not just uh, is not T n minus i or, or T i or anything. I mean, no, 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 no. It's a algebraic relation, right? So it's not yeah, of course, it is the inverse of T one. T one inverse is the inverse of T one. Yeah, yeah, but in terms of T i, I mean, uh, I, I'm just saying that T i inverse is not T i in some. Yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. So, I think maybe I can say one line, which is strictly speaking, when you write down a group, if you want to have generators and relations like an algebra, then you would put in inverses of the generators as well. So in some sense, you know, secretly underlying any group's generators are the inverses as well. I'm sorry. Uh -huh. okay. I see. Like in an algebra, you would say k times l equal to 1, if you would want to say k and k inverse. Right? So that, mm -hmm. that's the same way, you might as well secretly add in the inverse generators. Right, right. Uh, so another uh, uh, clarification I had. So this uh, uh, this 
diagram for this uh, dart is is really uh, what some what is sometimes called a bicyclic graph right it's a graph with two cycles uh, one is t1 to tn minus 1 s not and one, the other one is t1 to tn minus 1 s not check is that correct uh, i am not familiar with this bicyclic graph i'm the wrong person to ask uh, anybody no, no, i'm just asking uh, I mean, the way you have drawn it, it seems like there are two different cycles. One is T1 to Tn minus 1 S0 and the other is T1 to Tn minus 1 S0 check. But the T1 to Tn minus 1 are common, right? Yes, yes. So it's a, I mean, it's really a graph with two cycles where there is... Uh, I, if, for example, I don't know if, I, suppose I write it like this. Ah, exactly, exactly. That's what okay. I'm asking. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. The paper writes it two separately, and I've written separately. I don't know if one is supposed to. If one thinks like this, one gets into trouble, or does it uh, help? I, I don't. I don't know. Uh, I don't. Uh, I don't think that. So, if you drew that picture, then strictly speaking, you would be saying that S zero and S zero ah, check commute. Ah. And we don't want that. Okay. To uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There uh -huh. is that implication which you don't want. Correct. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So okay. the writing like this would, of course, imply S not and S not check to come in, which is not. Yeah. Which is uh -huh. not. Yeah. Okay. So uh, at least if, but for that maybe I it's, I I don't know Arun maybe uh, I can keep that in mind that this does not mean that and still write this. I don't know if. Anyway, it looks a hypothetical thing uh, for now. We will write it separately unless uh, there is some reason to write it uh, differently. It would have made sense if, you know, for example, that I diagram, the I involution was sending things to themselves and not inverses. Then maybe you could have said this flips something about the x-axis. But given that it anyway sends things to inverses, maybe uh, is there any actual uh, yeah, place where that diagrams symmetry about the x-axis would be used. Um, again, I'll let Arun uh, yeah. answer the question. In any uh, moral way that is. I mean, I think that you, you said everything. This involution is switching, uh, trying to switch the non-checks and the checks. And if you like, you could, you could make ti check equal to ti and then have as an, of course you have another involution which just takes the inverse of every element of every generator. So in some sense, this I is a combination of the thing which puts a check on every generator and which puts an inverse. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Uh, that, that works. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let us, um, okay. Uh, now we're going to introduce um, some elements. So this will be x epsilon one, x epsilon n. And I I'll get a little ahead of myself and write this as x sub one and x sub n. Uh, you will be allowed to write this only maybe after you check that these actually commute with each other. But uh, like I said, we'll just get a little ahead of ourselves and actually write it, start writing like this. So these, these are elements now in the, uh, this will be elements in the dot. This is B and theta. Uh, we will define this. And these will be called the polynomial generators. Why are they called the polynomial generators? I will, I'll say some more in just a moment. But before that, let me also introduce y, y1, which is denoted like this. So uh, initially we will denote it by these more elaborate symbols and then shorten them to these, these symbols. Okay, these are uh, elements of this, Dot. Okay. Now these are called Sharednik Dunkel operators. Okay. 
So right now everything is, uh, no, nothing is motivated or uh, uh, everything is just pulled out of the hat. And why are these called the polynomial generators? So x1 through xn uh, generate a large abelian group uh, actually isomorphic to some lattice, yeah, maybe the character lattice of JLN, of the torus of JLN, um, in, in the in the dot. Okay, and therefore, um, so also uh, they generate. A polynomial ring in um, the group algebra. And by duality, so we we'll use these dualities i and eta. Um, Sorry, and the group uh, algebra is always over which ground ring or field? Ah, uh, yeah, uh, that is not is left open at the moment. It's just a vague comment. Okay. Maybe it is some. Yes. So there we already saw t to the one half and t to the minus one half make an appearance. So okay. uh, we will leave that open for the moment. Uh, if you follow that. These other ones, these y1, ym, also form a large abelian group uh, in this. And the thing is, McDonald polynomials, when we get to them, eventually our polynomials in in the variables x1 okay so so much for that let's get to work so what is X. Sorry, could I just see the last slide? Sure, sure. Okay, thanks, thanks. Yeah, any questions before we go on? And with, with in these variables and with some coefficients, as you said, in the ground ring or whatever. Yes, yeah. Maybe with, yeah, yeah. Okay. So right now, this is just, uh, just very vague, yeah. No commitment as yet. Thanks. Okay, so uh, so let's write down x x uh, epsilon one, which was also called x one. This is uh, this is definition. G tilde p n minus one inverse. P one inverse. Okay, and then I write x epsilon i plus one is equal to this is again definition T i x epsilon i or maybe I since let me write it like this more elaborate notation. So these are the definitions of the x axis. And okay, now let's apply to this um, the delta duality. Okay, if I apply the delta duality. Then this becomes G 
and this becomes these go to the air inverses. They go to the air inverses. And this is uh, I of X epsilon uh, one, which is Y epsilon one check. So this is definition. And if I apply here, this will similarly become, I'll, I'll call that Y epsilon I plus one check. And this is becomes T I inverse Y, sorry, Y epsilon I check T I inverse. Okay. Right. okay, and let's also work out um, what. Uh, Eta does to that. Okay, sorry, this is all just uh, uh, you know very boring at the moment. Uh, just some generators and relation stuff. Uh, but hopefully, I mean the excuse I guess is because we have to go through this. That's one thing, and then hopefully it will kind of you know it'll, it'll, things will become clearer uh, later on. Hello, sir. Just one doubt. Yeah. You define xi. Uh, there is no i on the right hand side. It is g check t n minus one inverse. Basically, this is x one or this is x i. That is x one. This is x one. Sorry. This is sorry. 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 This is uh, this. There was this is no i. Sorry. Sorry. Was that the confusion? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry. Okay, eta, if you do this, so what does eta do? It takes this to its inverse. Okay, and then uh, this will be switched. Okay, and then you can check that this is actually x to the minus epsilon. Okay, I would have liked to do this checking, but uh, um, for want of time, I'll move on. Okay. And so, or more generally, uh, x eta x e i will be x minus epsilon n plus one minus n. Okay, and eta y epsilon I check will be y minus Eta n plus one minus i check. Okay, these these are very easy to uh, find. Okay, um, so uh, I have to now prove them. Uh, show you why it is true that they commute, right? So uh, that is the main thing. Uh, now, before we come to the main theorem of today. Okay, any questions so far? I understand that it is, this is all very dry at the moment and you just have to swallow this. I, I've just tried to swallow it. Okay, but hopefully the next thing will be a little more interesting. Can I go on? Is this okay? Okay, I guess I will go on. So the next thing is this pictorial representation. Okay. So our boredom hopefully is not uh, is relieved now. So uh, the claim is that the subgroup uh, generated by uh, G check. T1 and Tn minus 1. Uh, so for elements of the subgroup, there is the following pictorial representation. So uh, note that T1 through Tn minus 1. See, we are saying braid group. So therefore, where is the braid 
right? So here is the braid showing up. So you would probably have uh, seen the braid the kind of, uh, uh, the braid corresponding to each one of these. So let me write those. There is an extra bar here. Okay? There's an extra stick kind of thing here. Uh, so there are, as you would have uh, seen these, these, there are N, these are elements, these represent braids on N strands, right? So I'm writing now PI, okay? The braids go from left to right. Uh, very often they are represented as going from top to bottom here, but we, here we do left to right. Okay, and this goes above and this goes below. So you should think of this as a braid and the numbering is from top to bottom. So this is one and dot, 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 i, i plus one, and this is n. So these are the n strands. Okay, at the moment, this plays no role, but in the next picture, it will play a role. Okay, so, uh, So this would be familiar that if I just take these generators, T1 to Tn minus one, and write out just this uh, diagram that, right, and take only the braid relations, then uh, the elements of that group can be identified with braids like this. And these can be composed as we will see an example. Uh, and uh, th there is a relation between these Braids and this group. Okay, so uh, so we we said what these correspond to. Let us just say what G check corresponds to. So here is the picture for G check. I should write this. Uh, um, So there are these strings which go upwards, which uh, that is two to one, three to two, etc. N to N minus one. Okay? And then this string comes down beneath all those and joins them. So this is G check. Okay. Now, if you do this, then, uh, any questions? Um, is this uh, okay? And the composition is just by attaching uh, things here. These end strands, they will get attached and this stick also gets attached. Okay, so what is X epsilon? So let's draw a picture of that. And so here is our ith position. So the um, so these strands are like this. Except for the ith strand, everything is straight, goes to itself. The ith, ith one also goes to i, but it goes like so. And so given the definition of x, which was in terms of g check and the um, and these these are their inverses, um, you can easily deduce that x epsilon i has the following pictorial representation. Okay, and then uh, I will, okay, I will pause here. My next picture, I will show you why the excess commute. I'll draw a picture to convince you that the excess commute. I'll um, wait for you if you have any questions. So is the action, uh, for the action of 
uh, G, do we need another uh, bar at the bottom or some such thing? Ah, that's a good question. I, I don't know. This is only, uh, see, they, they only say it for the subgroup, right? Of uh -huh. course, there is, you can also do it for G and uh, with, the, with the same things, uh, something would hold, okay? Uh -huh. I don't know if there is, if you can combine, if you can talk about two things simultaneously. See, you, you can talk about this or that, I suppose, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Arun, do you, is there a way to talk about both simultaneously? Yeah, I don't know. For, for type GLN, I don't know how to make pictures that work simultaneously. No. Mm -hmm. ah, there you go. Okay, so at least for now, we are uh, just... Uh, I guess it's conventional to write these for G check and T1, Tn minus one rather than the other way around. Okay, so let me draw the picture for, uh, so X epsilon one, um, let, me, let me draw, let me draw N equal to four and I want to draw X epsilon three, X epsilon two which is actually equal to x epsilon 2, x epsilon 2. So to check this, you can take the pictorial representation for x epsilon i that was given on the previous page, and then draw this, draw and check that this actually works. Okay. So, um, so here is 2, here is 3, so this is 1, there is the stick, okay, let me go a little below, so there is, one, two, three, four. So remember, I'm numbering from the top. So okay. Now the reason why I wrote it like that is because that's when it dominates. It's on top. That part is on top of the rest. Okay. Uh, so here the arrow, the strings go beneath. Uh, here, of course, there is it doesn't uh, interact. Now, here it comes and comes this. This one is beneath all of them on the side, and comes like this. Okay. In a sense, you can see that. If, if I may be allowed to draw, there's a stick going here, of course. There's a stick passing through. Everything passes over the stick. But they look like a nested, if you, if you want to see them, they are nested. So you can sort of pull this, pull this strand through the bigger strand, so to speak. Okay, so that is the proof within quotes, if you wish, that the X is coming up. Okay. Um, Sorry, so. Just to recap, what was the top row again? Just the top uh, uh, generator dot. Uh, just it's an it's an unnamed object, is it? This one. Yeah. No, this is just a stick to keep track of uh, things. For example, uh, so so, for example, if I don't have this uh, uh, stick, right? Maybe this G check will look like a brain. I mean, see, you know, ah. you see, if I don't have the stick, just rem remove the stick. This then this is just another brain, right? Right. So, but but G check is not that brain. See, this G check and T one T n minus one is a larger group. Right. So the stick sort of keeps uh, uh, is keeps oh. uh, keeps uh, everything in order. It's just I mean, something, but it's not. It's yeah, it, uh, it's, a it's a shepherd. It's a shepherd. It keeps. Uh, okay. So it's not a strand of the break, but it's some sort of topological obstruction to. Huh. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Exactly. Huh. It's it's it always goes to itself, meaning it's 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 just there. But what it does is prevents things from um, uh, degenerating, like mm -hmm. this, for example. Right. See, without the stick, this G check, as I, I let me repeat, it would be just another bra element of the braid. Right? Without right. the stick. Okay. Thank you. I don't know if there Maybe, are. Uh, uh, if, you know, if you know fundamental groups, then 
course, the braid group, the usual braid group is fundamental group of C minus the, the, the braid hyperplanes. But if you take C cross minus the usual hyperplanes, C cross has a puncture at zero. And so you get a, a, a loop, you can go around zero. And so this is, this is the same as, a, as an ordinary braid group, fundamental group of a configuration space, except that you're replacing C with C cross. C okay. cross is C minus zero. Okay. So in a sense, this is the point zero, which is puncture. Uh, is that okay? Is that, <laughs> is that, would that be okay to think like that? Yes, yeah, it's exactly right. Yeah. Thanks, Arun. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, so um, the main theorem, uh, I mean, it's not called a theorem, I guess, it's only called a proposition, but uh, since we want a theorem, I guess, today, uh, it is the following. So it's the alternative, alternative presentation of uh, B tilde N, the dot, okay? Now, what we will do, so actually there are two of them, alternative presentations. So the first one has X1, Xn, P1, Tn minus one, S0, Q and G. Okay. And respectively, it has Y1, Yn, uh, Yn, P1, Pn minus 1, S not check, Q and G check. Right. So you can see that this, I, if I just apply duality to this, I'm going to go from here to here. Except that T1 will get replaced by T1 inverse, but that's model of that. And uh, S0 will go to a S0 check inverse, but here they're generators. So Q is central. And then there are these uh, relations. S0, T1. Pm minus one. Uh, there is of course the conjugation by G, which takes here S not P one Pm minus one. Okay. Now what are the relations? The xi commute among themselves. And then there is T I X I P I is equal to X I plus one. Okay, which was how the X I plus one was defined, if you remember. But now we need this as a relation. T J X I is X I T J. Okay, now let me specify this. I is equal to one, two, up to n minus one, and j not equal to i i plus one. Okay, they commute. If uh, j and i are far apart, they commute. Uh, there is also g x i g inverse is x i plus one and G Xn G inverse is Q inverse. So it's like X1, but except that it picks up a fact, okay? So, and then there is respectively, I will write this out later, um, since I'm running out of time, there are relations and all this to this, okay? And how do we prove this? The proof is rather uh, boring. 
So as we have seen, all these relations, we've, uh, we've seen um, uh, that these relations uh, hold, right? Uh, and then we, uh, to work backwards, what we do is um, um, we, if I put all, if I put uh, these, uh, if I take these as generators, then my original generators, I must be, uh, I define in terms of these and check that um, those relations. Work. I hope I have said that uh, correctly. In any case, it's rather an easy thing between going between these I repeat that these relations we've already seen they hold, right? So if I take this subgroup generated by these elements in the group, then it is subject to these relations. Uh, now, I hope I'm, I'm just getting a little confused uh, whether that is good enough to say that. Uh, and then I, for the reverse, I consider the group generated by these generators and these relations, and then write out the original generators in terms of this and check the, those relations. Uh, I may be missing something, um, but uh, at the moment I'm confused, I admit, but uh, this, this seems like a very, I checked it and it seems very simple, straightforward. Now, there was one more thing I wanted to do on calculation, but I am out of time. Uh, so let me save that for next time. So the main theorem is this uh, alternative definition, alternative presentations. So when I say presentations, what I mean is you can use these generators and these relations that have written down or the generators in the bracket here and some relations corresponding to these which you can obtain by just applying the delta duality to these relations. Okay. So those are the relations here. I will write it out in the notes when I send it out, but since I'm out of time, let me stop. Thank you. Any questions and comments? So, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. In, so, if we look at look for just the affine Hecke algebra inside this, can we realize it with some of these, uh, just the X's and the T's, uh, and maybe S naught? Is that right? Affine oh, Hecke algebra. Okay. So, uh, the T's and the uh, see, of course, you also have the. I mean, okay, the fine art in art in algebra. They'll also be pi and, squared relations, but group yeah. algebra is quotient. Even the quotient of the yeah. quotient of group algebra. Yeah. Yeah, the group algebra of the. I mean, are there nice generators so that if you take the group algebra, take the subalgebra of the generators, and take a suitable quotient, you get the fine Hecke algebra? Is, is that what you're asking? So the yeah. correct way to ask it, yeah. I suppose, is okay. we have not come to the Daha okay. yet. So we, we have not come to the Daha, but suppose we go modulo those uh, relations. Right, right? that's what I mean. Right? And then you look at the subalgebra generated by S0 and T0, T1, T and minus 1. Right? Mm. Will they form uh, an, um, the affine Hecke algebra? Possibly. Uh, Arun, is that correct? Yes, yes, that's right. And you could also dually take the other set with S0 check and maybe the... Uh, in yeah, yeah. So uh, I guess it is maybe more a little more interesting to ask for uh, the extended affine and so on, but that's, um, that's where we need to relate uh, things with uh, the affine. I mean, the ba basic idea is if you take T, the, if you take T1 and S and G with no checks, that's one affine Hecke algebra. Uh -huh. And then if you take T1, S and G with all checks, then that's the second affine Hecke algebra. So there are uh -huh. two, two affine uh, Hecke algebra. Uh, a question. 
uh, you take the G because you want GLN. Is that correct? If I want that's, only SLN, uh, I would just stop with the S0 and the P1, P1, P1 right? Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay, but then in the double case, there are two of these Gs because there are two sort of uh, store eyes. And, I'll stop sharing. So I have a question. Like, <clears throat> uh, like in the bright case, uh, bright group case, uh, do do we also have some uh, topology behind this topological motivation? Uh, sorry, what was the question, Venkatesh? Uh, I didn't hear you properly. So when we come to this uh, double of an octane and so on, so bright group we have no? like. Mm -hmm. the, topological motivations to study them. Mm. Some background, topology background is there. Like that, do we have it here as, as well? Okay, let me give you uh, my naive answer and then let's ask Arun for the, the real answer. So I guess, uh, um, you know, I guess here the topology is more to keep track of the uh, relations. I think it is more invented uh, to uh, sort of inspired by the relations and you observe that maybe this, if you think of them like this, then I, you do see that they satisfy. And then maybe there are applications to topology to, you know, um, um, knots or other things. Uh, more this way rather than being, uh, being uh, influenced by topology to begin with. Except uh, if, as Arun already said, if there's any relation between uh, uh, fundamental groups of uh, uh, so Arun, I'll over to Arun. Yeah, you're right. Both are true. One idea is that if you take, for example, the finite bile group, and then you affinize it by adding the translations to get the affine bile group. So then if you take the affine bile group and you affinize it again, you get the double affine bile group. So this is the Bray group of the double F, I know. But an alter alternative way to think completely different is you, instead of taking a configuration space in CN, you can take a, a configuration space on a product of n elliptic curves. So, or, or you can think of any, your elliptic curve, which is a, a torus, and then you put uh, dots on there and let the dots move around to make your fundamental group. So if you take, the point is, if you take an elliptic curve minus the hyperplanes and take the configuration space of endpoints on that, and then the fundamental group, you will also get the dart. There are two two different ways of looking at the same object. Okay, another question. Uh, but, Again, uh, but, do they uh, appear as? Yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, Venkatesh. Before you ask, let me just ask. So. Uh, what, that would mean that there should be sort of uh, pictures for the whole uh, dart as well, right? Except maybe there we should be, maybe they are not uh, writable on a piece of you know, on a planar piece of paper. I mean, but if you they are topological, there's topological meaning you can give to. That's right. Yes. Go ahead, Venkatesh. So when you said about this double affinization, again, uh, my question, that also comes from this toroidal, toroidal thing uh, with nullity two. Is there any connection between the, the wild group that comes from nullity two and this double affinization? The, yeah, they turn out to be the same. So, okay, they are same, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, any more questions? Uh, okay, if not, uh, let's thank uh, Raghavan. Thank you. I'll send you the notes and also some exercises. Arun, um, I will send a bunch of, I plan to send a bunch of exercises, but those are merely 
based on uh, your notes, uh, some, you know, some checkings that I didn't do and some pictures to draw some pictures. But it would be nice if uh, you can suggest more exercises, please.